Coming up next Saturday night in San Jose, it is Bellator 154. The event can be headlined by a light heavyweight matchup. We're joined by one of the men that's going to be in that main event. It's Mohamed King Mo Lawal, who's 19 and fourth, won no contest in his career. We're going to be taking on Phil Davis. Mo, as always, appreciate time. One of, where I kind of want to start off is I, there was an article probably, I don't know, a month or two ago where you talked about you know taxes and, and MMA of of you know, you said he goes. I would suggest anyone start an LLC or a corporation. Since that article has come out, have have a lot of fighters maybe reached out to you and maybe started to say, "Hey, what did you go through?" Yeah, quite a few. Some you know about probably about eight fighters, but you know a lot of us. I've got like text messages and just like short things, but I haven't had to really talk on the phone much. Just a few, a few, a few, a few people. That's about it. And of course, uh, the fight coming up here against Phil Davis. You know, one of the comments that Phil had has said leading up to this, they, they, he says he fi- he's struggling to find where he thinks you could win that fight. I mean, when you when you hear a comment like that, I mean, is, do you just kind of brush it aside? Yeah, I brush it aside. I brush it aside because, like, to be told, he knows the truth. Like, if that can stand with me, I mean, they try to wrestle with me. I'm cool with that. Or try to grapple with me. Like, do it. What? I was sitting at one knockout and a knockout artist. Like. You see a stand up, he got the kick here and there, he likes to he doesn't commit to any strikes. He's a one two double A, you know, faint double A, up kick, double A. Um leave the left kick left head kick, double A. You know, that's about it. Like, you know, like you know, he moves around and hops around, like he can say all he wants. You know, if he says to me about Rumble John, he says same thing about this guy, that guy. It is what it is. I I really don't care. One of the things he said, he goes, he, he feels that you don't use your wrestling in MMA. I mean, do you kind of feel like do you do you not understand that comment when someone says that you don't use use your wrestling? Uh, uh I don't know. I don't listen to these tests. What do you know about me? Like the thing is, I don't know about wrestling MMA, but how come people say Mo is boring? All I do is lay and pray. You know, think about that, and then all of a sudden I get the opposite. Oh. Moses is wrestling. He's throwing up his boxing. So what is it? Am I boring, or am I knocking people out? What is it? Um, my last fight in life, I took everybody down at least once or twice. You know, and I, on the fight, you know, um, uh, I took down Lynn. You know, I took him down. You know, every place, every my fights have gotten taken down pretty much. Besides the fights that end of a quick knockout, so he can. I don't know. He, he uses wrestling a lot. You know, I use it when I need to. Mm-hmm. Um, he forces he forces the wrestling. I don't. It seems like leading into this fight that majority of people are picking against you. Do you kind of do you love the fact that people think that you can't win this fight? I've been I'm too I'm gonna pay attention to what people think because some people don't want to fight. I don't I don't care what people think. So I've been just picking him because he fought in the UFC before. I'm picking like when he go out there submit me, like when did he submit somebody last? Mm-hmm. You know, outside Newton. You know, um, he knocked out. He got his third knockout, a one first first true KO his career. You know, what I'm saying like, you know, like I have what's what's the I'm not worried about nothing. You know, what I'm saying he has more he has more decisions than anything when he comes down to it. He's more very decision fighter. Okay, cool. Do you see the same Phil Davis that you know prior to his days in Bellator? I mean, do you see? Do you basically say he's the same guy he's been for the past couple of years, or do you see a little bit of a different fighter? I like to see this. I don't know, really, the fighters really change that much. He's getting more confident. He's confident, but we'll see. How, we'll see how the confidence is. What's in the case? He's a talk and be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He's a talk about that, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what's up when uh. When uh, when the case closes, because I'm pretty sure he wants to wrestle, so he won't have to get a hit. And of course, uh, once again, we're joined by King Mo. The wall is going to be the main event of Bellator 154 next Saturday night. Of course, this is an event that you can watch on Spike TV beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, 5 p.m. local time out in California when the main card will start here. Uh, in terms of you know this fight and what it could lead to, I know you know people are pointing to potentially a 205 pound title, but you have mentioned that hey, I, I want to fight. If I, I you said I love to fight Minikov. It, it, it seems to me that you're kind of this rare breed in MMA where you say, you know what, I'll go fight a heavyweight. I'll 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 fight at 205. I would go down at a lesser length than 205. Why do you think you're you seem to be a rare breed in this sport? Well, I'm not. I'm not worried. Yeah, I just look at the people that came before me. 
the Dean Thompson, the DJ Penn, the Matt Lindland, Dan Henderson, Vanley, Sakuraba, Kenzo Gracie, Hoyce Gracie, you know, Mark Hall. We go back to Mark Hall. You don't catch fight anybody anywhere, any weight class. Just make sure the money's right. That's how I see it. Him and Nari fight out of weight class. You know, Joaquin Hansen is, is, is I'm, I'm not doing anything different than those guys are doing. Just to, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to chase that money. I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing, but at the same time, it's a job for me. You know what I'm saying? I like doing it. It's a lifestyle, but it's a job. Mm-hmm. You know, for some of my life, it's a lifestyle. It's a job that pays, and I enjoy doing it. What What is the most fun about this job for you? I mean, is it just simply fight night? Fight night is competition. You know, and competition play time for me. One of the major topics in MMA right now is drug testing. And I've talked to a couple of Bellator fighters. They said, hey, I really wish there were more drug testing. Is that something that you feel that maybe the promotion needs to do more to make sure that uh, you know everyone that's stepping into the Bellator cage is uh, you know fighting clean? Yeah, you know, they, they, do, they, do, they do random testing. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. They'll call you like, hey, you got 48 hours or 24 hours to show up here and there. I just don't know when they do it. You know, so in the past, I've done it quite a few times. That's the past few fights. They, I've been, they're like, Mo, you have 24 hours to report to this place and have to show up and get tested. So yeah, it's, just, it's just randomly. It depends on who's going to pay for it and what. Because right now, those who got in the place to where they can pay for these tests, all the drug testing, but when you start making more money, I think that things will change. You know, right now, the U.S. had start on the tour. And they've been around for like about 20 years mm-hmm. plus. You know what I'm saying? Those who have been around for, who knows what, seven I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. So they they're still trying to they're still trying to you know close the gap. We got now we got we got a new regime trying to protect the fix the old regime. Cause the old regime kind of was losing money. Now the new regime is breaking even, making a little money. So they got they got a long way to go to where they can start prop, you know profiting them more. It, one of the the things I've talked about with drug testing is changing the culture. With you been around the sport as long as you have, have you do you see the 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 culture of, of drug testing and, and and maybe fighters who are using drug, you know, performance enhancing drugs in the past. Do you do you sense that culture is changing where guys are no longer taking that risk? I see. I don't know because the thing is, that you don't know who's doing what. You know, they know who's doing what. You'd be in their head and be in their body, and be with them twenty four seven. Because there's some guys that feel like, oh, he did. He might be on something. But then they're like, ah, is he? He's getting tired fast. So you see guys that that look fucking flat, flabby and and sloppy, and they've been beyond the best thing ever. You don't. You don't know. All you can do is speculate. You know what I'm saying? To me, I don't speculate because if I speculate, I just drive myself crazy. Mm-hmm. Is it to the point now, like I think for a lot of people in this industry, that you're you're just not surprised when you hear, you know, fighter X pops for whatever? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. But the thing is that people make sure like everybody's on something. Because the thing is, if you look at it, look at most, look at most, look at most, most of the fights, if you look at most of the fights, most of the fights that happen, you rarely hear about people getting popped. Think about it. It was like they say the fight card of 15 fights and two three people get popped. That's nothing. I think about they say you have 100 fights, 100 fight cards, and five, six people get popped. That's 6%. That's really nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, compared to, you know what I'm saying, compared to, you know, the, what's really going on. Mm-hmm. Or, to, you know, what, what people think is going on. Like, there's people, there's people taking, there's people not taking, who knows who it is. Until they get popped or whatever. And of course, you're going to return to the cage here, Bellator 154. Uh, any prediction on the fives or just simply you're going to go out there, you're going to do what you do, and you're going to win? Yep, I'm going to go out there, run shop, and do what I do, man. You know, um, he's he pretty overconfident. Well, he can oh, he can uh, overly underestimate me and get get um, get there. Mo, as always, appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate. It.